Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining the Wellness Trinity podcast. I am Dr. Jacqueline, naturopathic doctor and owner of the Wellness Trinity, where we provide natural solutions for modern day wellness. Just a little disclaimer before we get started, what we discuss in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. What you do with the information is to be used at your discretion as the recommendations are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any diseases. So today I have a special guest on the show. His name is Dr. Todd Watts. And I will have to say this is such a God story about how I met him. I listened to their Parasite Summit a few, um, I would say about a year and a half ago when they had it launched. And I was just happened to be in Hawaii, ready to relax. And all of a sudden, I had this amazing information at my hands and ready to learn about parasites at the same time. So I listened to this whole thing while I was um, hanging out in Hawaii and knew there was something about this mimosa pudica seed that was moving all kinds of worms in people. And um, it stuck with me for you know the last year and a half. And and I had a uh, you know enough products to handle for the season I did and and I I just couldn't think of another one but finally it was about time when I was thinking well maybe I should finally start using this mimosa pudica seed for to help my my clients with their parasites and um about a month before I went to this seminar I had this I was thinking this it was on my my list of things to tackle then I go to this seminar to learn more about different lab tests with the Great Plains lab and guess who's sitting behind me Dr. Todd Watts, who is <laughs> the other brains behind the Parasite Summit. And um, I just couldn't believe it. So I just knew at that point, I'm like, okay, if that's not a sign from God to look into this right now, then I don't know what is. So I was already I was already ready and excited to start it. And I, I was like, okay, I went back the week later, I, I sent up for, um, to sell their products and it's been amazing ever since. They've been flying off the shelf. So I am so honored, Dr. Watts, to have you on this podcast today. Welcome. Thank you for having me on. It's, it's great to be here. <laughs> so let me um, just go through your bio real quick. So you're a National Board Certified Chiropractic Physician in Idaho and a functional wellness practitioner and licensed with the Pastoral Medical Association. Many know you as a parasite guy, but um, you also have extensive knowledge in functional blood chemistry, biochemistry, and in helping others with chronic illness and overcoming their struggles to restore their health. You're also uh, um, the co-founder of Microformulas and Cell Core Biosciences and love to research to formulate products which will change the world. Dr. Watts has the fir- was the first to bring Mimosa Pudica seed to the general health market in the US. He has an amazing health journey which, he has, which has led him to be able to help others. So Dr. Watts, why don't you go ahead and expand a little bit on that, that your health story and, and how you got to what you're doing today. Okay, so my health story really began when I was 28. And when I was 28, I got this virus called Epstein-Barr virus. And I know uh, I, I got, you know, I got all these symptoms and my, I went in to say, get tested for mono, thinking I had mono. And I take it back negative, but my spleen really hurt and it just had all these symptoms and signs and like the throat was swollen, the you know, lymph nodes, you know, the lymph nodes are huge and uh, it was so fatigued and tired. So my dad's like, look, you got it. You got Epstein-Barr, go back, get tested. And I was positive for Epstein-Barr virus. And the doctor said, well, there's not much we can do. Just go rest. It'll, you know, just don't do anything strenuous for the next year and your body will get over it in, in 60, 90 days, you know, whatever, whatever it could be. Some people could be years and uh so i just went to a health food store because i grew up going to chiropractors and nature paths and and i just loaded up on you know loaded up on things to help support my immune system and at that point i got over it and went back to my normal life but i started getting symptoms different a variety of symptoms by the time i was in my late 30s going into my 40s uh life changed a lot the uh the market crashed in 2008 uh, 11 years ago and my mortgage and real estate business uh, crashed with it. And so I had the chance to uh, lose everything I had, all my homes, three houses, cars, and, and I got to decide what to do with my life at the age of 40. And so I decided to go back and get my doctorate and go through for schooling. And in in the process, uh, while I was in school, I learned, I was learning a lot. And went to conferences and realized that a lot of the symptoms I was personally having with severe fatigue, headaches, 
migraines, joint pain, brain fog, word recall issues, uh, allergies, just there's a whole list of things that keep, go, keep going. But uh, I had Lyme disease and uh, Babesia, some co-infections. Mm -hmm. And then as I was going through and trying to overcome that, I kept cycling and, and, and it only made me get about 30% better. So uh, with that, a doctor said, hey, I think you got parasites. I never heard parasites being an issue, but hey, that can make sense. I lived in South America for a couple of years, above northern Argentina, by Bolivia. Um, you know, I had animals growing up. That, that can make sense. So I went, I went on the journey of learning about parasites. And in this process, my whole life changed. Mm. I, my, my, so many of my symptoms resolved. I got probably 80% better, maybe 90% better. I still had severe muscle fatigue going on. Um, my, I, I think of three types of fatigue, overall fatigue, brain, you know, brain fatigue, and, and then muscle fatigue. And I resolved a couple of those. So just the, 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 the muscle fatigue was bad. I couldn't work out for about 10 years and I was always very active, very athletic mm -hmm. working out. So now 50, I, I, um, you know, I'm working out four or five days a week and my life's back you know, I feel better now than I have in the last 15 years. So the last part of it was clearing out toxins, heavy metals, mm -hmm. and, and things that were inhibiting the you know, mitochondrial function that, I, that allowed me to move forward in my health. Wow. And so I, I help people do the same thing. Having gone through the journey of dealing with so many of these infections that you hear about people having and the toxins that attribute to that, the approach that we take is to help to open up the, the drainage pathways, clear the infections, clear the, the toxins and support uh, the energy of the body needs to increase immune function and increase mitochondrial function. Nice, nice. So how long would you say that journey lasted for you? Uh, about 10 years. 10 years, wow. Yeah. 10 years. Well, nobody had the answer, right? They had a little parts. Yeah. So I had to keep going until I figured it all out. And yeah, that's, that was the thing. Now I've been able to put it all together for people and help them out like what you're doing. Yeah. So what you had to, what took you 10 years for, for a normal person now, why well, obviously everybody's in a different state in their health. Um, for it's like, let's say someone came to you that was just like you, how long do you think with the knowledge you have now, it would take them? You know, a year to two years. Wow. Wow. So it depends on how bad they are. You know, if, the, if it's, it's molds involved in the process, how bad the viruses are, uh, you, you know, it's, there's a variety of things. I mean, it's emotional trauma because emotions yeah. can play a major role in a right. chronic illness. So, uh, it just, there's, there's a variety of things there, but people got to realize it's going to take a year or two, sometimes right. three to get to where they need to be in full health. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree. I tell people the same thing too. And sometimes their mouth drops, but if you think about it, like how it took you 10 years to figure all this information out that we can actually speed it up to one to two and maybe three, if it's really bad. Um, I mean, that's, that's a lot of years cut down on, on someone's health journey. Absolutely. And the thing is, is within that first year, people are still resolving issues. I mean, I see people that like their headaches, just getting their migraines gone and their daily headaches gone within, within, you know, two, two months, three months is life changing. And then right. you know, we just pluck away. Their energy starts to come up. Just a lot of things are going and getting better along the process. Just, it, it's just that it's very smart to move forward and not just settle forward a little bit, but to get, you know, to be sure they're moving and following through on their, pro, you know, on everything. Right. Right. Yeah. So for those of you listening, you know, be encouraged and, um, you know, understand that it can take time. And I, I find I, now I tell my clients up front, like, this is not a quick fix. If you really want results. You have to be in it for the long run. And um, I'm glad that you're, you know, you're explaining that to the audience as well, too, and, and letting them know that it does take time. But in the end, you can see your results. So don't give up in the middle. Just make sure you have a, someone that you can work with that you trust and, and has good protocols and, and you know that what is going to take you to from step A to step Z. So today we're going to talk about parasites and, um, you know, I would say you and Dr. J. Davidson are some of the parasite experts in this field. So why don't you first go ahead and explain what are parasites to people that don't understand what they, they really are. So there's multiple classifications of parasites. The cestodes are the tapeworms, 
long, long, no, the longer, longer parasites typically. Uh, there's the trematodes, which are flukes, it can be liver, lung, pancreatic, intestinal, blood flukes. Uh, th there's the nematodes in the nematode area, uh, most common pinworms that we know about, roundworms, uh, and a threadworm, such as strongyloides. And then there's the protozoans. And the protozoans are the microscopic ones that you see, like in blood, for example, where you could have Babesia, Toxoplasma gondii. Mm. And, and so there's a, a whole uh, list of what, what those are as well. So each category has a huge list of the types of parasites that go under each of those. And, um, you know, 70% or so, 70, 80% of parasites aren't seen by the visible eye. So therefore, you're not, not going to know, necessarily know you're passing them. People always want a result. Hey, I took an antiparasitic, but I didn't see anything. It doesn't mean something's not happening because, you know, like for me, the Babesia was so uh, problematic that it, it caused uh, a lot of upper tension in my upper cervical area headaches, um, a lot of anemia because it breaks down your blood cells. And um, some people have created really the muscle fatigue, heavy legs, uh, shortness of breath. Mm. Those are some similar uh, things that palpitations, heart issues, low blood pressure. So you'll never see that. I mean, I do a live blood analysis like you do, so you can see some of the, those infections in that uh, live blood analysis. But the for the most part, you're never going to see passing those things because they're so microscopic, but yet it makes such an impact in your health. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. Cause I, I, I do get that from my clients when they start taking parasite herbs, like, Oh, well, I didn't see anything pass. So uh, maybe I don't need this anymore. Um, but we, we will do the live blood analysis and maybe still see some signs of it. So, um, on the other side of it, maybe I'm wondering if you can't see something microscopically that, there might still be big things hanging out in people as well too, the, the opposite way. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what our focus is in one of our products the most put seed will help to clear out uh, with biofilm buildup, mucoid plaque, parasites, along with other antiparasitics like the Para2, which is designed to help uh, with the digestive system, but also you know, these, these bitters and these spices are really good for your digestive system to help push out infection especially parasites okay okay so aside from live blood analysis what other types of testing do you do for the parasites i don't really do much stool testing which is most common in functional medicine so most mm -hmm. functional med and naturopathic doctors will run stool samples uh, it just it's really positive and so if you're going off of that then you're never going to treat it when that's the really big issue i do uh, assessment forms and questionnaires, I, I look at case history quite extensively. And then I just, I just you know, put a couple of fingers here on my neck on the carotid and I feel if they have a pulse. And if they have a pulse, they have a parasite. Oh, I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, if you're alive, you have a parasite. <laughs> yeah, everybody has them. It just depends on what level it's affected. Mm -hmm. Somebody could have allergies. Somebody could have asthma. Somebody could have eczema. Somebody could have headaches. And there's never a relationship back to you know why why it's happening it just oh here's something to you know let's clean your liver up a little bit more here's a medication or a steroid to put on it um not realizing there's a reason for it and behind it and, mm -hmm. and dr holda clark is really good she wrote a book about cure for all diseases and she relates different types of parasites to different symptoms and toxins and metals and how all those are play a role together and that was written years ago. And we're so much of a toxic world today than we were 30 years ago. Right, yeah. And so it's worse in what we're dealing with, especially because of all the herbicides and pesticides we use in our foods today. Yeah, because those make it, the, the worms grow in our body, right? Sure, and they also create an environment where they can thrive because now our immune system isn't able to, to deal with it because it's being shut down by all the chemicals and toxins or it's allowing killing off the good bacteria and and the allowing the bad to thrive uh and with the toxins then mm -hmm. the parasites just thrive without without any any repercussions uh-huh so some parasites we can get in like let's say we drink bad water and or but some parasites we can just actually just start growing in our stomach as well too right or in our well, body they can and, and that's that's why stomach acid is so important. And you know, eating bitters before you eat, you talk, you know, other cultures always eat 
of the types of fermented foods, bitters and things to help with their digestive system, but it also plays a role in pushing things out. Mm. Um, the really it's, it's uh, amazing how easily exposed we are to this stuff. I mean, I had some patients in the Northeast that it was in their municipality water. So they had their water tested wow. and it showed nematode larvae in their water. And then they had their neighbors, several of their neighbors water tested it was positive. And then they had some water from some businesses downtown tested wow. they were positive, but you know, they, the deniability of what the, the municipal water company had was like, it's not in there. The test testing is inaccurate, especially I'm like we did like five tests and these mm-hmm. were smart people. These were a pharmacist and an engineer and they had come right. back positive on stool sample stuff multiple times. So they knew there was a, they were getting exposed to it in some way. They never thought it would be their municipality water, but wow. you know, having dogs, cats, animals, you know, dogs and cats, especially dogs, you're going to get roundworm and tapeworm. Uh, you, you know, eating undercooked meats, you can get stuff, vegetables. So many of our vegetables today come from foreign countries. Mm. They just tell you don't, you know, don't eat the lettuce in Bolivia where we were, where I was near, you know, you'll get, you know, you'll get the runs and you get sick. And, but yet we never think that we can get exposed to any of that stuff here in the U S but we, we import it from all over the world. And, wow. and, you know, technically parasites don't exist in the United States, according to the medical world. But yet, you know, you tell me that the people when they're crossing the border from Mexico, when they're in Tijuana or in, in Nogales, they have parasites. But once they cross the border, they no longer have parasites. Is it a border thing? I, I don't understand that. It's right. similar, to, similar to Lyme disease. You know, these, these, these deer know that they have ticks with Lyme in them or parasites in them that when they cross the border, from one state to the other state, the CDC says they're not allowed to be in that state. So they, they, they just must jump off because they know that. <laughs> or or the, the mosquitoes that fly across the, the border from one state to the other state know that they're carrying that virus or that bacteria or that parasite that, according to the CDC.gov or the medical profession, the AMA, they're not supposed to be, those infections aren't supposed to be in those states. So, so therefore, they, they, uh, they know they can't cross that, that uh, airspace. Yeah. Yeah, and as if we're not traveling all around the world too, you know, like and that too, right? We travel. I mean, I have so many patients like, oh, where'd you go? Well, I was down, in, you know, I was down in Mexico on a cruise. I got sick, and I've had these problems ever since. Or I was down in Costa Rica, and or I was over a lot of. I was over in Asia, Cambodia, um, Thailand, mm-hmm. and gosh, I have a lot of patients that come back from there, and they just have chronic parasitic and yeah infection issues that. It, you know, come back from Africa, same thing. Mm-hmm. Sure, we understand that and we have the knowledge that they're in these places, but they're also here. Mm-hmm. Just that right, exactly. we have better yeah. hygiene and, and better water and sources than a lot of these other countries. So it's not as prevalent, but it's still here. Yeah. Okay, so this is a little bit crazy. Have you heard of that so certain states are passing these bills where um, – we, that people can liquefy dead bodies and they're going to put it down the drain. So instead Correct. of burying, let, let, wow. let's say, okay, someone dies and instead of burying them properly, that um, you can, you can opt out. I guess it's for it's a cheaper way to be able to get rid of dip, people that die and uh, sure. they're going to be able to liquefy it and put it down the drain. My, my aunt is a political activist in California and she's always giving me up things up to date and, that's the current news wow. in 2020 they're supposed to liquefy dead bodies and put it down the drain in california and i think it's already happening in some states have you heard of that you know i haven't but you know cal i'm, I'm from california i grew up down there and I, I definitely do not live there anymore because people are crazy there you know, <laughs> that's why i want to get into politics but their politicians are corrupt just like most politicians and the companies own them like this mandatory vaccinations over there is ridiculous mm-hmm. Right. on what they're doing and it's because you know that the gentleman that is uh running that senator the doctor is uh is being bought off big time and it's sad that people are just so easily bought off by these pharmaceutical com- right. companies and people pushing their agenda instead of looking at what's the good thing what's the healthy thing for people right yeah so you know being that parasites are such a huge problem and that everybody pretty much has them and we're going to liquefy these bodies and put down the drain. I mean, it, it's like we're just going to have more parasites, it seems like. <laughs> Hopefully it liquefies the parasites, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
either way it's toxins it's, it sounds it's, disgusting it's it's an environment that is not healthy for our body for drinking this water um but um anyway i just thought i'd throw that in there wow that's shocking yeah yeah i could give you the um i don't know what it is the, the information afterwards we, we chat offline <laughs> So anyway, back to um, our questions about parasites. So um, can you explain, let's say we already talked about common symptoms and uh, you know, we talked about how it's all over the world. It, it doesn't really matter where you're at. Um, can you talk about maybe how we can afford, uh, avoid, sorry, getting them? Part of avoiding them would be just having your, your, your immune system functioning well and and really, you know, making sure your your microbiome is great in your gut. So that's avoiding eating toxic food, which would be all the GMO stuff and foods that are sprayed. It's important to, I think, eat organically, especially from foods that are in your in your area, mm. not foods from across the world, other states. Ideally, you know, growing, getting homegrown food, mm. gardening yourself. Um, we're going to get exposed to stuff. We can't avoid that. So I just, you know, I just cleanse a couple times a year and, mm -hmm. and, and just, and make sure that I, you know, do bitters or and herbs that, that help with pushing stuff like that out. Okay. So it, it just, it's, it's one of those things we live in a world that's, that is toxic. We're going to expose to toxins. Right. Let's detoxify. Yeah. We're going to expose it. We're going to expose the viruses and expose to uh, parasites. Let's just detoxify and keep a healthy digestive system and immune system. Yeah. Yeah, so what I usually explain to clients, I'm sure you probably go through this process too, is in the beginning, it's going to usually take more of a bigger detox plan. And then afterwards, we're on a maintenance thing where we still need to detox after we have our detox. <laughs> but sure. it, maybe it might not be as much, but we still need to keep doing things like you said, like taking the bitters and uh, making sure we're eating organically and so on and so forth. So what are, um, you mentioned bitters a few times. What are some good foods and herbs and things of that sort that are, are good bitters that people can have? Well, there's the, there's the different greens that are bitters that are great to have, and that's why people eat them before. But uh, I use herbs um, like malia, which is a, a neem, neem. So uh, it, it, it's a bitter that is good for the stomach and also the liver. Um, I, I use that in one of my products. I also use Vedanga, which is a spice that tends to push out, uh, push out parasites as well. So spices, um, a lot of these countries, for, you know, internationally use a lot of spices and bitters just in their foods. They use a lot of fermented foods where we in the U S tend to use more processed carbohydrate and uh, toxic, uh, oil type foods. So, um, you know, looking at that part of it is what are you eating first and foremost? And then how can you, you do that? There's a, there's a lot of variety of, of bitters that you can get just in your foods and different types of lettuce, uh, greens that will be beneficial. But, you know, for me, I, I a lot of times just use my products that I, that I formulate to, right. to, to, to take with me and uh, upregulate that. Um, the, the thing that you look at is, is what is the main issue with parasites? What are the symptoms people can go through? And then from there, how long is it going to take to, to, to clear them out? Being the fact that we're exposed to many different types, the, the it's, it, it could take six months, could take a year, could take two or three years to clean these things out and get over all the problems. Mm -hmm. I see probably clients that are uh, extreme, so when they're when they're so bad, those ones take a while because they're infiltrated everywhere throughout their body, mm -hmm. and uh, it's amazing how they come out. Where do they come out of? I mean, if people come out of their ears, their nose, you know, their mouth, throwing up out their back end, through their skin, uh, all, all sorts of ways. Mm. Now, those can be more extreme cases where the average person uh, probably just passes stuff through their stool and, you know, they don't ever maybe see stuff. Mm. But the, the key part is eating healthy and, and trying to make sure the toxins aren't building up in the digestive system so that they have a good microbiome. And microbiome is really much better served by, probi not by probiotics, but by fermented food. Do mm. you want to mention a few of those? Well, just, I mean, you can go to Whole Foods and get fermented cabbage, uh, you know, fermenting. If you're doing breads, do more sourdough. Uh, there's kimchi. There's, you know, I like, I personally like purple cabbage, right? That's my favorite tasting one. My wife likes the green cabbage fermented. There's the carrots. There's vegetables, multiple of vegetables that you can ferment. There's kefir types, uh, products. Um, 
Some people use kombucha. Kombucha can be helpful, but not too much of it. Um, probiotics, on the other hand, can help a little bit, but the problem is, is that you're trying to guess and I guess nature what you need in your body. And uh, I find that just eating fermented foods much more effective, especially in the research. Really? Studies. Okay. Yeah, in the research studies it shows that, and there's more, multiple ones, and you start looking at if you take a, if you take antibiotics, how do you re- how quickly do you recover? Well, by doing nothing, it takes about two months to recover. By by doing fermented food, it cuts that time in half. By um, taking probiotics, it could take up to six months to recover. So. Okay. It's because we're trying to guess which which of the strains when there's thousands of strains and we're trying to throw in one or two or three or ten. Mm, okay. best. Um, nature knows better in that realm of things. And like nutrients too is getting nutrients. Start first with your diet and food, and then from there, therapeutically, you'll bring in herbs and nutrients that you may need from a doctor. Okay. That really help. So how much uh, fermented foods do you usually recommend people eat? Uh, you know, I just, it, it's more of a personal basis of what somebody may need. So at dinner time, we just have some, we scoop out and give it kids and we'll eat, you know, a tablespoon of fermented cabbage. Okay. So it doesn't necessarily have to be that much. No. Exactly. Yeah. Not like a salad full of <laughs> fermented cabbage. <laughs> No, yeah. it's better. Yeah, when you can, yeah, you don't want to overdo it either. What's the uh, problem with overdoing it? Well, some people have it, such an imbalance with, with the toxicity in their gut, right? That creates a SIBO issue. So mm-hmm. small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And, and at times the fermented foods can be worse for them until they can get the bad bacteria knocked down or the toxins, whether it's from mercury or lead or heavy metals or other environmental toxins such as pesticides, herbicides, and, you know, a whole list of another 180 types of more chemicals that are, that are problematic. So the, the, the key part is, is if these toxins are there, you're never going to get the right microbiome right. Put together. And that's why it's so important to actually clear the toxins out and the infections, then your microbiome can actually heal. So right. I, I, I related to a, um, you move into a new house and you get the backyard and they never put sod down. So it, it's just full of weeds. Mm-hmm. So you have all these tall weeds going on and you know, most people are like, Oh, I'll just throw some seeds in there and, and then I'll have a great gra- you know, a great lawn that doesn't work. You can't just throw seeds in there and like throw in probiotics. What you have to do is you have to go in and you have to plug out all the, all the weeds. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and you have to fertilize and, and get the right soil pH and the right soil balance. And, and a nutrient value in those soils and you have to water and take care of it and then you can seed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So um, can you explain how, um, what's the proper way to detox these parasites and the binders that go along with each journey? Well, we have a system where our our goal is if I just go kill parasites off, he can have bad reactions. He can feel horrible and tired and fatigued, get rashes, get headaches. So we, we look at the process of opening up drainage first and supporting energy. So if the body has energy, that means the organs can work better because every cell, uh, every organ is made up of cells. And a lot of these organs like the brain is, and heart are high amounts of mitochondria per cell, up to 10,000 mitochondria per cell. The liver is like a couple thousand mitochondria per cell. And so you've got to be sure that those, those systems are working, the energy is happening within those cells so that... The, those organs can work well. And then as you open up drainage so that it can filter out, it's really important. The first thing you look at is the bowels. So if the colon, if you're constipated, if you start to do other things without making sure that bowels are moving, boy, that can be a very bad reaction for people. So we have to, the bottom plug of that, of that funnel is the colon. And if, that, if that's plugged up, everything else becomes toxic going upstream. So in our funnel that we draw out, is the colon, the next level is the liver and kidneys, the next level is the, is the lymphatics, and there's the, uh, um, the organs and tissues, and then from there, the cells. So if we want the cells to be really clean, we got to be sure that the rest of that funnel going down is, is working well. And so we designed a protocol within our, within our products to open up the drainage. Bowel mover to move the bowels, liver kidney detox to get the kidney and livers, 
uh, immune support to, to drain the lymphatic detox, uh, the binders that will help to bind and clear out toxins from the, the gut and from either herbicides, pesticides, metals, or from infections, and then products such as the Momos pudica seed to bind and strip all those buildup of toxins in the gut, and also to clear parasites in the you know the pair one, which really help or two, which really helps to then start pushing that. And we have a new formula coming out here really soon that will also address different types of parasites too. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So can you explain how the binders relate to your program? Because there's three different ones and I noticed that they all do different things. And why, why do you put them in certain times in the, in the program and, and so on? Great question. So the biotoxin binder is that specifically it helps to bind biotoxins such as uh, toxins from infections, bacterial infections like Lyme, uh, gut, gut bacterial stuff also binds. And that's part of the products in there, like the yucca root does really well binding in the gut. The um, parasites produce stuff, yeast produce byproducts, mold produces byproducts, the mycotoxins. So our, our goal is to, to uh, support the processes needed to detoxify. So in the biotoxin binder, there's some product in there to support part of what gets shut down in the liver. So in mold toxins, mold toxins shut down NERF2 pathway. So we, we have a product in there to help op, op, open that up and upregulate because those people, their whole liver just ends up not working very well and then they react to everything. So our goal is to be sure that those pathways are open to do that. And then the binder specifically can bind toxins in the gut and then also bind stuff systemically to clear out. And so I've had people with Lyme that had, you know, seizures that within taking just the biotoxin binder was able to reduce their seizures or completely eradicate the seizures wow. uh, people with numbness and tingling in their hands from the Lyme and the inflammation that it, were able to reduce that dramatically just that one product mold wow. uh, with the biomolecular oxygen and the biotoxin binder their mold uh, symptoms reduce significantly because we're binding the toxins you still have to address the unique mold spore or colonies in the body or get out of the environment but upregulating cellular energy is tremendously important because a lot of it gets downregulated with these biotoxins. Mm. And then the foundation or biorad chem binder, that one's designed to help by bind viruses and remove them off the membranes. It, it is the folic humic acids. There's a lot of research about that. Uh, it helps. There's a part of it that's designed to help bind radiation uh, exposure, which in California, people have a lot of that from. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Fukushima and things that are uh, continuing mm -hmm. putting into the environment. Uh, there's uh, products in there. So the next product, the MedChem or the HMET binder, helps to bind heavy metals and environmental toxins. One third of the other one is is specifically that. So it, it really helps upregulate um, not only binding products, binding toxins, and removing things, but it also provides uh, high energy carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to the body. So it feeds the good microbiome. It helps provide building blocks to the cells because 96 point, you know, 3% of our bodies is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. The other remaining 3.6, 3.7% is made up of minerals. So we don't get typically enough of that high energy molecules and electrolytes that come from the carbon based molecule that we get in our minerals and in, in our binders. Mm -hmm. So the binders and the minerals uh, and a lot of our products will have some fulvic and humic acids in there to really upregulate the energy of our products as well as to um, help them get through the stomach acid without, you know, intact, without getting broken down and help to get, drive them into the, into the body where they need to go. And, and then they're in a, in a bioavailable form, not an inorganic form or a form, which is a, like a valence or a charge that our bodies don't utilize. They're in a, in a plant-based or plant-derived minerals. That, that will be in the form that our bodies will recognize and utilize. Yeah. That's why our products work so well is because we've looked at the pH, we looked at the oxygen saturation, we looked at the charges, we looked at where they need to be activated at, how we get the maximum amount through the stomach acid and into the areas that they need to go and then how do we need to activate them to be sure that they're utilized properly. Yeah. And, and then our new mitochondria product coming out will be just phenomenal for detoxing the mitochondria, the cells, and upregulating and preserving the energy of those. Wow. Wow. Well, I'm looking forward to that one, definitely. So the you said um, you mentioned the humic and the fulvic acid. So I noticed that those are in a lot of your products, and you had just mentioned that. 
um, is that that's what specifically is helping um, the minerals get to where they need to go? The minerals are fulvic minerals. Uh, oh, they are. They're, there's lots of fulvic minerals on the market, but ours specifically are extracts that um, that go through a proprietary system that make them different, right? The pH is at a specific pH. Uh, the the oxygen saturation is specifically because minerals can bind and deplete. Um, uh, min minerals can bind and deplete oxygen out of the body they're in a plant-based form an organic form and then they're highly energized with poly dispersed poly anions so these uh people know what electrolytes are so these uh, ions that are highly energized so that they they can um, have energy to be able to bind toxins or to uh, bind metals and clear them all the way out of the body and um, they're not spent carbons like an activated charcoal where there's no energy to them there's no life force to them these all have high, high life force, high energy to them. And uh, our binders are similar too. They're not just binders. They're also repairing the body, repairing the tissue, the cells, providing the life to them. Okay. Um, real quick, your um, microphone is having a little feedback. I think it's because it's touching your... Oh, touch my shirt there. There, there we go. And there we go. Oh. Yeah, that's much better. <laughs> Probably should have told you that a little while ago. Sorry, Sorry. about that. <laughs> you know, because I'm moving... So with me moving, it's, it's the shirt rubbing on the microphone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apologize for that. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Okay, so that's good. Um, so I've been learning a lot about um, copper um, toxicity or copper dominance, estrogen dominance. Um, so I thought it was interesting when I was learning about your how there's humic and fulvic acid in all of your products and, and how it can help those type of minerals like copper and iron get to the right places in the body instead of being stored in, in the wrong places and causing problems. So um, I found that interesting. Um, you know, I'm glad that you put those things in there. Do you have anything to say about copper dominance or? So part of the problem is it's copper dominance or copper toxicity more than anything because people can be actually deficient in copper, but then have copper toxicity. Mm -hmm. And it's because the type of copper they have in their body it's not at the right charge or valence that their cells can use. Mm -hmm. So it's toxic. Where our plant-derived minerals have copper at the right bioavailability that aren't toxic. Okay. And then they have the ability to grab the bad, you know, the, the, the bio-unavailable copper and pull that out and clear it out to rebalance the body the way it needs to. Same with many other minerals. Copper is just a mineral we need, but it's metal. Heavy metals are the same thing. We we all have a need for a little bit of uh, all types of different metals within the body, but they need to be at the right charge, the valence, mm -hmm. that are, and, and they need to be bioavailable or the inorganic forms are going to create problems. And right. And they're going to become toxic to the body and shut down processes as well. Okay. So the you're, you have a supplement that's specifically, um, it, what is it called? The mineral, something minerals, biomolecular minerals? or well, bioactive, bioactive carbon minerals. There you go, bioactive They're, they're plant-based derived mineral. Okay, so, so they're from plants. They're from plants, not, yeah, exactly, not an inorganic source or a chelated source or uh, where a lot of minerals aren't, aren't from a plant-derived product. Mm -hmm. So the, the difference is the plant-derived stuff is these minerals, um, these, these minerals are broken down by bacteria and uptaken into the plants. And then, the, and then the plants actually have then are decomposed and then broken down to so they're very bioavailable to humans. That's why it's a really good source to get our, what, our minerals and nutrients from plants mm -hmm. over getting them from dirt. Right. And that's, aren't a lot of minerals made from dirt and stones and things of that sort? Exactly. And they're not, therefore, at the right charges or valences and, and uh, they're not bioavailable. Mm -hmm. to our bodies that have gone through this whole process processing system that they, they do through to get into a plant to, mm -hmm. to make it um, to where we are. And Dr. Jack Bush talks a lot about that and, and his product. And he discusses the importance of having all these minerals and things, but in the right form and, and usage, right. there's a big difference between a plant derived molecule, even plant derived heavy metals mm -hmm. is intoxic to the body in a way that a inorganic source can be toxic to the body. Yes, that makes complete sense. Yeah, I've always been a fan of um, food-based or food nutrient supplements. I, I use another company and he I interviewed the, the owner of it as well and he um, corrected me on that. I was calling it food-based, but food nutrient apparently takes it to a whole nother level. <laughs> so that's a, 
another discussion for another podcast that I have. But um, but anyways, yeah. So I'm I'm with you that I think that we need to eat food, <laughs> we need to eat plants, the way that we were designed versus rocks and dirt, and th- those are not forms that our bodies um, can handle. So so just to reiterate, so when we're talking about parasites, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the drainage funnel is working, and basically our our bowels are moving, our kidney, our lymph, our gallbladder is moving. Our lymphatic system is draining as well too. Um, you said our tissues and organs, and then our cells. And once we know that's working pretty well, then we want to start taking the parasite herbs after that, and then start moving the parasites. Correct? Yeah, it's the biggest the biggest issue with parasites, especially gut, is getting the bowels moving. And mm-hmm. as the bowels are moving, that's going to be easier. And then your kidney, kidneys, and liver are the first things that would support and work up mm-hmm. but we we really focus in on the first month a couple months of supporting cellular energy mitochondrial energy production and uh, binding some of the biotoxins and endotoxins and uh, opening up these pathways for about 30 to 60 days before we introduce the, mm-hmm. the some of the antiparasitics and stuff with the mimosapudica pair one product and then the then the pair two Okay, so how do you know when they're ready to start adding the parasite herbs in? You know, for some people, they, some people can handle it from the get-go, right? But other people are very sensitive to things. Mm-hmm. So what, it, what I'll typically do after 30 or 60 days is I realize I need to get these people th- started on the process. So if they can't handle one capsule of it, then we start to microdose it. And we continue working on it. Some people, we have to work on you know the drainage and getting things working for longer 90 to 120 days but for the most part what i have found is that as i can clear out parasites then everything else starts to work better as well right because now the liver that's being plugged up by flukes or strongyloids is uh you know is working better now the the toxins being put into the body are less so you can't wait too long to address it but at the same time you got to be sure you support it for at least 30 to 60 days Mm -hmm. and then from there start and some people I start on tinctures that are one drop in water and the drink and, and that's all they can handle. Other people can do two or three dropperfuls mm-hmm. yeah. and, and you work up. So it's not a race. People will tell you detox is a journey. It's not a 30 day cleanse or a seven day cleanse. Mm-hmm. It's a journey and it's going to be your whole life of being healthy to do that. Yeah. And so just be patient with yourself and patient with the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why it's important to work with a practitioner too, because then mm-hmm. they can kind of help you figure out where you, like you said, you might start taking something, feel a little bit off and, or maybe some people are just tipped over the edge. And then that's when we realize, like, okay, maybe we need to work a little bit more on the drainage funnel again. And maybe some parts of that are not completely filtering out. So maybe it's not the best time to start taking a parasite herb or maybe you need to do a little less. So, um, you know, that's where, that's where like, you know, people like you or me, our, our expertise comes in as well, too. Um, so, very well said. Very well said. Yeah, yeah. I do have clients that um, some of them, like you said, come in and I'm like, okay, you, you, you know, I look at your blood and, and other tests they do and they're ready. They seem like they're ready, their gut and their liver, kidneys and, and um, some of those uh, parts of the, the bottom of the drainage funnel. I, I just love that drainage funnel analogy. <laughs> Such a great uh, way to explain how that works. Um, but some of those lower parts seem like they're ready to, to handle more of an intense, um, detox or, or getting rid of infections. So, um, can you explain actually why you do the, why you really hone in on the parasites before you even, we talk about heavy metals or chemical detox? It's because it, it, it affects the detoxification processes in the body. So I have an example. I had a, a physician a medical doctor that was uh, retired and she was in her sixties and had been a doctor for, you know, since medical school for 40 years, she was not a big believer in parasites, you know, because they didn't get any training in that process, mm-hmm. but she was doing a, a heavy metal detox, going through a cellular detox uh, with another practitioner. And in the process, when she got to what they call the brain phase, she was having tremendous amount of problems with that. Uh, she was breaking out severe rashes all over her face and body and couldn't break through the detoxification process of what she needed. Um, I think part of it was processing alpha lipoic acid and some, some of the sulfur-based molecules of uh, products that, that are binders to help clear things out. And so she had seen me on a podcast and contacted me 
and I took it through a six month uh, process of getting her going on uh, parasites. And within four months of doing stuff, she had identified five different types of parasites that had come out of her. And uh, she was able to then do the detoxification without breaking out in rashes anymore. So sometimes the reason why I go in that process is one, they produce a lot of toxins. Two, they also can inhibit detoxification and block pathways to drain. Mm -hmm. And as you look at it, the immune system is also affected by parasites. So they can upregulate the Th2 pathway, which can then suppress the Th1 pathway and upregulate viral replication. And, uh, and then now you got a chronic viral condition and then you have really low energy, mitochondrial energy. So mitochondrial function or cellular energy is super important in detoxifying. And mm -hmm. if you're, if, if you're country continuing to suppress that, you're never really going to get to where you need to go. My goal with people is to always be sure that their bodies can do it on their own. That they're not dependent upon a product to do it. Right. So how can I restore the physiology and the biochemistry within the body so that it can detox properly and within mm -hmm. itself? Yeah. Yeah. I always like to explain to my clients too that in the beginning, we're trying to figure out a little bit where their adrenals and the thyroid are. Um, and well, actually, even before that, are you sleeping? <laughs> and how is there sure. sleep? Because, you know, if you don't sleep, you're already, the foundation is already tipped over. So you're trying to figure out what, what might be causing someone not to sleep. And parasites even could be. Uh, parasites are a major role with that, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, I mean, I can't tell you how many people come to me and they can't sleep. And I mean, I've had challenges with that too, dealing with my uh, parasites and things like that. I needed to cleanse from. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, if you can't mm -hmm. sleep and then energy during the day, like you said, if we don't have um, the, you know, the energy, then we're not going to be able to detox properly. So that's almost even before the drainage funnel. I feel like that you, you mentioned making a chart for the practitioners like that. You might even need to put something about that in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, we, we were, doing the drainage in the parasites and people always jump to the parasites first because they want to see something come out mm -hmm. and then they don't feel so good and they realize, okay, I got to go back to the drainage and it made it so much better. But right. we have our sensitive people, people that are very sensitive to things who realize that we needed to focus on mitochondrial function. And so that's mm -hmm. why we work with the oxygen and uh, we use the biotoxin binder for that. We, we use the minerals and then the mitochondria restore um, product that will, help to restore the energy, which then will help the drainage work so much better, which will help then the process of going through and clearing everything out work so much better. Okay. Okay. That's great. That's a great little mitochondrial package you got that go in there. So you got the biomolecular oxygen, the biotoxin binder, the minerals, and then your new product that's going to come out for specifically the mitochondria too. Exactly. And the, and the oxygen is so important because if you, if you look at it, the final electron acceptor in, in the electron transport chain, so this is technical, but I'll explain why in a minute, is oxygen. So basically the free radicals we're making from making energy in the cells need oxygen to bind onto it so then we can convert it to water. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have that, then we have all, the, all, these, uh, all these free radicals breaking up our mitochondria. The other thing is, is that it's required for the process of going from glycolysis into Krebs cycle, which means that if you don't have oxygen, you're this molecule called pyruvate will convert to lactic acid and it's like it's it's similar to uh, aerobic exercise versus anaerobic exercise mm -hmm. if you sprint you're going to deplete that and you're going to go to working with um, energy that converts to lactic acid and your muscles get sore where if you're just running or jogging then you can go a lot further distance you don't get so because oxygen levels are continuous mm -hmm. and you can do oxidative phosphorylation which is means you can make energy using oxygen so if you're depleted of oxygen, which a lot of people are, then they, they can't make energy in the mitochondria. It's all through glycolysis, which is very little energy. And a lot mm -hmm. of it's going to lactic acid. So then they get muscle fatigue. They get fibromyalgia. They, they, uh, they get brain fog, uh, you know, all these lactic acidosis type of symptoms. Wow. That's why oxygen is so vital for multiple reasons uh, mm -hmm. in, in, within the cell. And, and, and then from there, understanding the, the importance of ions and minerals and electrolytes from the biomolecular or bioactive mineral product, which is super high energized to help out with things. But yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal package. Our inner energy kit that we're going to have there is going to be just phenomenal. 
And yeah, and no, that sounds amazing. That. I mean, I so far have been using your biotoxin binder and I, I do, I love that product and um, I have a lot of my clients on it too. And it, it seems like even in the beginning, if someone's very sensitive using the biotoxin binder, because it's like a sponge, right? Those binders. It is. Yeah. And um, so you, if they can't, if their drainage pathways are not working too well, then if they start releasing anything in their gut, then they usually don't feel too good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so having that sponge to, to help with that is, is good. And then, um, and then the oxygen you had mentioned um, in one of the, the videos I watched from you guys about how it's also good for sensitive people too. Um, why is it good for sensitive people though? The oxygen? Yeah. The oxygen is good because it's helping to create energy and not to uh, convert the pyruvate to lactic acid. Okay. So you're going to lessen the lactic acid in your body. Oh, less lactic acid. Okay. Right. And you're going to make more cellular energy and you're going to bind the free radicals that are being produced in the mitochondria instead of breaking your mitochondria. Most of them have very, very poor mitochondrial function and they don't make energy. So now they can't process stuff. They can't drain well. They can't detox well. Hence, okay. mitochondria function is so important. So when you take this product, you, you don't worry about having too much oxygen, right? Because isn't too much oxygen at some point not good too? No, our bodies know what to do with oxygen. And okay. most people never have enough oxygen. That's, okay. not, that's ne never been a problem. But, you, you know, it's, it's, uh, if you just take less of it. You know, it's just drops. Yeah. So since they're in drops, you can, to, you can monitor how much you do take. But for the most part, oxygen heals, right? They always say oxygen therapy is great for cancer. Oxygen right. therapy is great for, for anti-aging. Oxygen therapy is great for, you know, a whole variety of dealing with, with immune system function and getting rid of bad pathogens and infections and stuff. So, okay. uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, you're not going to get an, enough necessarily that way. Okay. Okay. So, um, I've seen also that you can rub it on places too. So I'm thinking like if someone has swollen lymph nodes, for example, is that a good place to rub it? Or is there other ways that like, why would someone want to rub it on the body versus ingest it? It absorbs really well. So for example, with somebody tears a muscle, somebody has a surgery or a cut or a wound, it's phenomenal for helping healing those tissues so much mm -hmm. quicker. Um, the okay. other thing I had a gal that had a, a stress fracture on the bottom of her foot for a year. She couldn't get it to budge, um, you know, just pain. And within 30 days of using that and an essential oil that I'd given her, uh, which she had been already been using for several months, um, the oxygen was the game changer in getting oxygen to the tissue to heal. So that's the big thing about oxygen is the more oxygen environment, the more, op the more ability to heal. Now, this is a, an oxygen molecule. It's bound to carbon molecule. So mm -hmm. being bound to carbon, it's a stabilized oxygen molecule. And so the, the body will, it, it gives life. Every single tissue in your body is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Every single tissue, mm -hmm. every protein, every fat, every cholesterol, every glucose is made up of three main elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay. So it gives you high energy, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay. Okay, great. Well, I'm glad that we touched on that because um, that's definitely something new to me and I'm, I'm really looking forward to adding that in my, my protocols as well too so okay well again i just wanted to uh, reiterate for people that are listening so when you, we talk about parasites we want to make sure that drainage funnel is working the bowels are moving the kidney lymph the gallbladder the lymphatic system is detoxing your cells your tissues and um well your organs and your tissues and then your cells and then when you know we feel like it's a good time for, to move on and depending on where your symptoms are, how sensitive you are, then we can start adding in the parasite herbs. And then at some point, we also need to deal with heavy metals and um, the chemical toxins as well, too. And then there's different binders that go along with it in the different stages. And, um, and then we can also use things like the, the bioactive carbon, bioactive carbon, right, is how you say it, um, to, to also help with the uh, mitochondrial function and, and the steps of this um, detoxification process. Did I, did I say that okay? You did really good, Jackie. Okay, I've been doing my research. <laughs> I've been studying <laughs> you guys well, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Fantastic, way to go. Yeah, so, and then the, the last thing I wanted to mention, um, I, um, you know, after studying what you guys are doing here, the, 
the parasites, they're like garbage collectors, right? Like when people have chemicals and toxins, they, it sounds like pretty much everything I see in the blood, I, things like candida, that we have a dysbiosis in our gut and I see candida. Um, I'm almost not even quite tackling straight the candida anymore like I was with enzymes and things and probiotics and, and low cal sugar diets versus more so thinking of uh, getting rid of the parasites and the toxic chemicals. Mm -hmm. um, because it seems like if we don't get rid of these things, you're just always going to have a dysbiosis. <laughs> so um, on that note, so parasites, what I always like to draw this little picture of when I'm explaining the parasites to them is show them like little, little circles in, between, in it saying that, okay, we're seeing all these things under the blood. We see the, the fungus, the candida, these heavy metals, um, other toxins and infections. And the parasites are basically housing all of them. So I've heard Dr. J. Davidson say, if you get rid of the parasites, you're getting rid of a huge part of the uh, problem and basically speeding up the process and their detox. Would you co-sign on that? For sure, but I also think that part of the problem is that there is toxins uh, that are creating the dysbiosis. So, um, we, you know, yeast is just, candida is just, it's, it's really, why is it there? It's, it's the environment. So yeah, after people, yeah. 20 years of chronic problems and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, hey, you're focusing on the wrong thing. You're trying to kill something off that's actually absorbing toxins. Part of what yeast does is it absorbs absorbs mercury, it absorbs metals and toxins. It's playing a role, that's why it's high in the body. So you have to go after why it's high. Right. So the typical high, you know, big reasons are uh, toxins, like heavy metals, uh, environmental toxins, medications, and parasites. Mm -hmm. And if you get rid of the medications and parasites, um, and then you clear out the toxins, then you're gonna clean the environment up to where you have little candida or yeast. Now sometimes you might also have to address it, you know, hit those out, but they won't come, they won't come back because you've, you know, you fixed the microbiome. You put, you created a good environment to where it's not going to thrive anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that made complete sense to me when um, I learned that too, you get rid of the parasites, you deal with the chemicals and, and other toxins and you know, it's, it's going to help that dysbiosis, but it's, it's um, going to also speed up that process and, and their healing journey as well, versus just kind of tackling each thing one by one. So Okay, well, anyway, um, thank you so much, Dr. Um, Watts, for coming to the show. I wanted to offer, is there any way that people can, um, how, how can they find you? Um, I, mean, I carry your products too, but if you have other information and um, resources for them, or, or if they, I don't have something that they're carrying, where, where can they find you? Uh, my, my website's drtoddwatts.com, mm -hmm. so drtoddwatts.com, and um you know, we have a lot of information, as you know, that's, that's out there on videos and uh, through some of our sources that we have. But, you know, I, I would say I suggest they, you know, contact you and help them down that pathway. And, and um, if not, there's other resources that you can get through our, our website as well. And there's stories and um, we're working on like our totalbodywellnessclinic.com website. There's not much on there. Uh, we're revamping that, redoing it. And um, and then I'll be, put, you know, I'll be posting, uh, I can post a lot on our micro formulas website. We post a lot of articles, but I'll be posting more articles and teaching a lot of information through Dr. Todd Watts as well in our Facebook page of total body wellness clinic. Okay, great. Yeah. And then the other thing was the parasite summit too, right? The parasite summit, you know, there, I was on the mold summit, the Lyme summit. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on multiple summits that are out there that we, you know, we talk about how all these things play a role. And if you have mold toxicity, how parasites play a role and what do we do for mold and what products do we have to help with that? Uh, Lyme disease the same way. What's the correlation between parasites and Lyme viruses. So we're, we're, we're actually launching the viral retroviral summit in July, July, uh, I think first through the eighth or something. Oh. And that, that summit will be fantastic. To, we have phenomenal experts that are on there, including myself, that I talk, and I talk about the correlation between the immune system and how parasites play a role with chronic infection of, of viruses. And then we have the mitochondrial summit coming up in December. And, and that'll be a fantastic one of people are experts in mitochondria. And I'll go into, I'll go into a lot of detail about the mitochondria and how important uh, that, that is in this process that we've talked about today and what causes the dysfunction in the mitochondria. And so and then, then how do you fix that and how do you address that? 
Okay, nice. How do people find these summits? Um, probably like drjdavidson.com, drtoddwatts.com. Um, I would say probably we, we, we you know, get on our email list. Uh, the email list, we put them out through there. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah. See, and hopefully you're sending it out too. You know what? I would love to do that. I um, need to make sure I, I, I plan that ahead of time. <laughs> I get, see, uh, somebody sent me them. So I, I think um, if I know ahead of time, then I'll, I'll be able to do that as well too. I would love to promote that. That's just awesome because I think the biggest problem is people um, are uneducated and um, once they, and people are looking for answers, but don't know. And so these summits are amazing at being able to, uh, you know, have that disconnect, um, the bridge gap. So. Anyway, so thanks again for coming on the show, and um, I look forward to chatting with you again soon, Dr. Watts. Thanks, Dr. Jackie. I appreciate talking to you.